Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the first omen. I got to say right off the bat, I enjoyed this movie. Even though when I first started watching it, I got this feeling I wasn't going to like it. But I got to admit, maybe I'm just in the mood for a horror movie or the way this fits into the Omen series. It really it really serves it well for me. I really appreciate this movie. Let's talk about the director, Arkasha Stevenson, who I don't even know. I've never watched uh, episodes of Legion or Briar Patch, um, just from a wiki thing. And this seems to be her first debut, movie debut. Bravo. It's very rare that I get into a horror movie and I like it. There's so many these days. They're numerous. I did a bunch during the October, or kind of after October for the uh, Halloween, where I get into my movie, horror movie, uh, you know, best. It's just, it's quiet enough. It's small enough. It's got enough of the feelings of a 70s horror movie from Italy, but not with the gore too much, although there are a couple of places where this movie made a decision to do things that could have gotten it like an RX rating. It, it, it's a little wacky, but I was pleasantly surprised and I smiled so big. I grinned so much at the end of this movie. Spoiler. Not that it's a spoiler, really, but this is a prequel to the original movies, which I love. Well, all right, the original Omen, directed by Richard Donna. Uh, Gregory Peck, just a all-around um, good movie for me that uh, maybe I'm weird. I grew up with a, my mom who was a horror fan and I read old books. I, I think the first books I started reading were horror books. And looking at it now, I really appreciate the first Omen, maybe the first two. I mean, it did get crazy. With, I think there's like four of them in a remake. But Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, uh, really hit me when I was younger. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be watching these when I was younger, but I really have an appreciation for the Omen series. Not the, not all of them, granted, but as a whole, it intrigued me. And becoming what I am now, I don't know, a strong atheist or whatever, you would think I would not even care about these movies. But it's a weird thing because... Like, I know there are great TV shows, maybe great movies that just don't fit the genre I'm in the mood for. Like, I don't want to watch real things, um, uh, things that might have to do with too much reality or police dramas. That doesn't mean they're not on my list for things that I will watch if I really am in the mood for it. I guess I'm always in the mood for horror, and I start getting a little weirded out with how horror, horror movies are made and what they cater to, way too many sound jump scares. This has a couple of them, but I think it serves the movie well. The, uh, the main actress in this movie, Nell Tiger Free, I loved her in this. She did a thing at the end of this movie where she's, I don't know, it's a, it's a cross between being possessed or carrying the, child of satan in any case and there's a i love the twist in this movie maybe the atheist in me just laughed and has such a fun time with this movie even though it can get really fucking dark so oh, okay so it's nell tiger free tile free botham sonia braga ralph innocent bill nye uh everything lends well to this movie Feels like a movie in the 70s, and it, again, it just made me smile when it was pieced together at the end. I'll get to that, hopefully. But this movie starts as uh, a real giveaway that should have been a warning sign that maybe this movie's not going to be good, because this old priest comes to another priest inside a confessional and tells them about the movie, the whole plot. And he says, look... Uh, Maybe he was part of it. And he tells this 
other priest, hey, there's a uh, I don't know, part of a cult thing or part of the church, and they're going to birth the child of Satan, the devil himself, and it is something, he hands him a picture, and it's kind of a plot thing. And so within the first couple of minutes, it's a tight, quiet shot inside the confessional, and they give the movie away right away. Actor from fucking um, Game of Thrones is the guy who's only in it for like uh, 10 minutes, uh, if that, Charles Dance. But it sets the tone as he tells them what's going on, and they do a fake out, which again... There were elements in the beginning of this movie that made me think I wasn't going to like this movie. So, again, kudos to the director, Akasha Stevenson, for letting it play out right for me. Again, I don't know if this is a sleeper hit cult thing, but I loved it in a, in a way. I love the way it fits in. So the priest comes, he tells the whole story, he gives everything away, basically. And then they show this uh, initiate, Margaret, from America. It uh, takes place in Rome, the movie. And she meets with the cardinal, I think it's Bill Nye, some other priest. And it's um, pretty much a straightforward, young, soon-to-be nun, you know, take your vows type thing. And... Is one strange girl, Carlita, and this is all uh, part of the hint that the father gave with the name on the back of the photo. Anyway, so as this young American uh, initiate is in Rome learning the language, having some cute moments with some of the kids, she befriends the strange Carlita and the movie is slow enough and paced enough well that I found myself enjoying the moments that were just quiet and made me go, you know, wow, I'm watching a dog fucking movie because it starts to ramp up its suspense in a way that I love. Now, as she starts, you know, getting to know people there, trying to learn the language, she has a friend, she goes out, and the priest who was told the information by Charles Dance, well, Charles Dance, they did a twisty thing where they faked you out where you thought he was going to die a certain way and he didn't, but he did. Which was kind of awkward because I'm waiting for the other priest, as soon as he turned around to go, to run over and help him. But you see that this mural glass thing breaks and Charles Dance seems to be okay. He says, he's fine. He walks away. But then you can see his head's been split open. And it kind of ends the first, you know, opening prelude to the movie. But the priest he tells it to, uh, who's Brennan, um, during the things that are happening with uh, the little moments that Margaret is getting, I don't know, instant, you know, inserted into this madness that's about to happen, the, the priest comes to her and he says, look, this is crazy, but there's a plot going on, and this is where I smiled, and I, I think I knew I was going to love the movie. So apparently this isn't, you know, the Church of Satan or Satan <laughs> is plans necessarily. This is the church's plan <laughs> because secularism is destroying the church and religion. Less people are going to the churches, People, less people are going to uh, priests and the orders of, of probably every religion. If you, I used to debate this shit, but and it's the church's plan <laughs> to bring about this child of Satan, so the world will see how badly they need the the church. Fucking brilliant in a way. Now this might not be the first time they've done that, or was it a um, a thread that I just missed in certain movies or even the original, but that's fucking genius. 
The fucking church sees the decaying decline of religion, which is fucking awesome, and says, hey, let's bring about the uh, end times. Let's make the devil born on earth, whatever, and the world will be set into darkness and they'll need the church. Holy shit, it works for me. Again, these two, these moments opening up, giving away the, the whole story with Charles Dancer saying, you know, what they did. And Brennan explaining that they are preparing a woman, which has been done, there's another reveal, but they get a special woman to meet with this jackal devil thing because he has to birth himself technically. So ritual, you know, the evil type bullshit. And did all the clues point to this girl, Kalita, and what they're grooming her for, keeping her away from the other people? Now, I'll admit two things. One, uh, you know, okay. So after about five, ten minutes in the movie, my brain started working it out, what the movie was going to be about. And I was wrong. But I'll give myself a pat on the back to realize that like 20 minutes into the movie, I knew exactly what was going on. And I kind of knew what was going to happen. It still didn't ruin my joy of the movie. Again, kudos. I really like this movie. It's got some moments in here that fucking, I'm surprised got, like if there's a theatrical release, that shit. And it goes a little far. Again, it kind of reminded me, it has the feel of a 70s Italian horror movie, which were all not great, but they had a special flair to them. There's, there's a blend of surreal and what's real, what's not, but not bashed over the head with it, not thrown in your face too much. Again, this movie tells you the plot of the movie right from the beginning, and that could be a red herring in, in a sense, but... Uh, this movie's quiet enough, small enough, um, loud enough when it needs to, and not silly jump scares in the sense that they're numerous and throughout the whole movie. This is a slow build suspense horror movie that fits right into the plan, and again, how it fits into the prequel for the original series just made me smile. So as this movie's progressing and the, the, the horror starts seeping into things, uh, explaining that radicals in the church uh, are going to bring about the Antichrist, bring people back to the church, which I find fucking awesome. And that Kalita, the strange girl, is going to be the mother. And after uh, there were riots going on, this is 71, and there's, you know, in Rome, and that's kind of put in there, but there's not a lot of places that they go to and it's not confusing but there's indications that Margaret's gonna get sucked into this in a bad way because she's befriending the, the girl the church is telling her that they're worried about her uh, uh, Skiana is like the code word they use for the fucking um, they're testing because you find out that they've been doing this for years, so there's a bunch of files on all these babies, Kiana, and their attempts at birthing the Antichrist, and there's deformed babies and all this stuff, and the mark of the beast, 366, six, six, so. And that's weaved in, and Margaret's trying to figure out what's going on, is, is she getting infected by whatever's happening, is her protection uh, instinct for Kalita, the young, again, great actresses and actors all over this movie, and in a way where it's a sneaker, like Nell Tiger, whatever, she, again, she does something at the end, towards the end where she's kind of possessed, sort of, but, and it's almost riveting and hypnotic and done in a way I haven't seen before. Um, so, but Margaret starts, you know, figuring out what's going on because the Brennan who came to her, she told him to get the fuck out of here, which most people would because you're a crazy fucking priest. 
Anyway, she starts realizing something's going on, and she confides in another person. Uh, this other priest who kind of kind of throws the story off, but he was approached first by Brennan, and she starts believing that there's something really going on. She sees that Carlita has the 666 in her palate as she's screaming. So that becomes a plot thing later. Um, again, is this... Is this rushing of Margaret the initiate and the church itself and what's going on with the women there and you don't really understand the depths of depravity and craziness until really the end or when the files are revealed one of these nuns uh, burns herself and hangs herself but this is growing realization spoilers that most of these women probably have done, have tried to birth the Antichrist. And when it's the reveal, because here's the real spoiler, spoiler, as Margaret's going through this, this new initiate, and they're warning her about staying away from Kalita, she realizes that she is the woman to give birth to the Antichrist, that she's been shell gamed by the church, moved around, whatever, and it's all her destiny. And the, the night she went out to the disco with her friend, uh, she was impregnated, she blacked out. And there's this little twist thing with the guy she meets, who she goes to see later, who gets hit by a truck, in one of the horror trope fashions that I found enjoyable. And rarely do I ever, but this is, again, it just, the pieces come together well for me. So, she realizes she's the Antichrist talking to the other two priests. They're going over files. Again, some of the pacing in this movie is brilliant because it switches and does the right things to push my buttons to get my brain in another mode. So as they're going through the pictures and they're trying to figure out, oh, wait, Kalita can't be the kid. She's too young, whatever, and these files are misplaced. Look at the baby in this picture. So the baby has the mark of the beast on her forehead. Kalita doesn't. She has it on her power. So, when it's revealed, she gets this dreamy, again, surreal, you know, if they're visions or nightmares, if they're waking nightmares, and she realizes she is the Antichrist, uh, Bertha, and she's got to get the baby out. So the three priests head out. Um, not sure what they're doing. If you really believe this stuff shouldn't have been done right there, I, think, I, I don't know. Maybe they're going to a real doctor. Anyway, they get fucking waylaid by the church people. And this is where Margaret survives the car crash. Well, you find out the other did too, but she starts doing this jerky movements, possession thing. But it's done so well. Give this fucking girl a fucking Oscar. Because she's giving birth, uh, the baby's starting to form. So remember, this isn't like a real birth thing. Right? She looks normal, or whatever, and then at the moment she's getting ready to be prepared, because it has to be a certain date, you know, 666, that the baby starts filling her belly, the water breaks, and she's in the street on the sidewalk. But you really don't know what's going to happen, because she's scared, she's possessed, and, she, and it's a quirky jerky great way to do this type of horror movie again i want to applaud but i just found this movie charming and scary and a little bit disturbing you know there's a fucking shot of a fucking woman's hoo-hoo you know what i mean and a fucking clawed hand coming out <laughs> there's you know very close to our uh, major r rate whatever the fuck this is I did a quick thing before I um, did this actual podcast, and you can see some of the, uh, when you read the, the wikis as I prepare for these things, like there was a lot of back and forth between um, this Omen prequel and the boards that give the ratings, you know, what are you going to get? So, this movie ramps up at the end with this one moment where she's out of the car, she knows she has to get rid of the baby, but they've been waylaid by the church. She does this herky-jerky thing that really is captivating. 
scary enough, real enough that it just really made me appreciate how this movie got to this place. And then she gets taken, she wakes up, she's strapped to the fucking table. Again, you've got a movie where the pacing's perfect for me, the music, I, I think it's part of the original soundtrack is used, or they the got the music guy. It's not offensive enough, it's not intrusive enough, but sometimes it's eerily present and loud. But in the right way, I think. The way sound effects should be used. Uh, music in a creepy or what it what it, it's set out to do. What is its purpose in this movie, in a, in a horror movie? So I'm giving this chicken a lot of boxes off here. Again, it might be a moment or two. It might be too disturbing. But as its mood <clears throat> uh, carries over, and uh, like again, I said, I got this 1970s Italian horror movie feel, uh, uh, which is kind of resurged in the last 20 years, and you find these little gems out there. Um, you know, I do, because I watch like fucking every you know, horror movie that comes out. Margaret is strapped to the table, giving birth. Again, you never know what the fuck is going to be put on an R, super R rating. It's just, and you know, Bill Nye, he's the cardinal. He worships her, he loves her. And, you know, to give a little bit more of the reveal, how she could be or is the uh, mother. Again, spoilers, she gives birth to twins in a fucking sack. And the only thing they care about, these fucking cultists, satanic, church fucking secular deniers is is one of them a boy and as soon as one of them is a boy they get all fucking happy and they give no fucks about the chick and the, and the baby girl margaret then asks to see the baby and she holds him and bill nye says yes and she's holding him she takes a fucking scalpel she stabs Charles Dance and no, is it Charles? No, that's Bill Nye. Dance died in the beginning. She stabs him in the neck. I'm guessing he dies. And then she goes to kill her son, but she can't. She gets fucking uh, stabbed by her friend who took her out to the party. And they burn the place and <clears throat> kill her and the baby girl. And it's fucking celebration time. They don't give a fuck about Bill Nye and whatever they've got there. Antichrist born. It's a successful endeavor. They've, they've done it. But Ma Margaret's befriending of Kalita comes back at the end to help her because it's Kalita who saves her from the burning her and her daughter. So it's revealed after that Brennan, the, old, the priest who was trying to warn her, who got warned by Charles Dance, shows up at a house and she's there with Carlita, Margaret Carlita and the baby girl and it's some years later because the girl's like, you know not a toddler but you know, right, so let's say five years or something, three years, whatever and she's living secluded with uh, Carlita and her daughter and she's just trying to lay low but Brandon says look, they're gonna, they know you're alive they're going to come look at you eventually now, there are a couple of things here that don't add up, in a sense, but I love so much of this movie, I didn't care, but it is not a perfect movie. Uh, however, as I'm watching this fucking movie, and we get to this part, I'm like, oh shit, okay, I could see where you could continue the movies, or do you actually want to invest in the history of these other movies that you're a prequel to? So what they do is they open up a file, talk about Gregory Peck's character from the original fucking movie and show a picture of him, go into how his wife's going to have a baby and it dies, and they adopt a baby, and Brendan tells Margaret that the baby has a name, Damien. And I got chills, I got fucking the biggest smile on my face, they literally stepped up to the doorway of the original fucking series where the American diplomat like Robert Thorne um, has a 
adopts a baby, but I don't think he tells his wife in the movie. It, you know, but anyway. So you are led up to the original movie. Even though I kind of sort of knew this was a prequel in that sense, I must have shut it out of my mind in, in the way where, you know, it's loosely a prequel or the fucking the god-awful job they did with The Exorcist where they bring Linda Blair and her mother back for garbage, for nonsense movie. This is unique enough for me. Now, there was other movies that came out. I think one came out at the same time as this with the same theme. You know, birthing the Antichrist. And there have been many done over the years. There's been five fucking, four Damien uh, Omen movies. Let's say five, because one was like a remake. But, holy shit, did I enjoy this movie. From beginning to end, even when I thought I kind of wasn't going to like it. And when I kind of figured it out, and then I figured it out again. And the quiet moments, the what the fuck moments. You know, there were a couple, you know, I wish I knew the fucking name of the movie that did it well. But, again, over the years, you find a, a little bit of the pulling back to the 70s horror, the, the you know, music-inspired um, creepiness that settles into the movie, like the original, the Amityville horror, like that humming, that, that, that hymn-type thing. This movie carries it over from the original... And it really bookmarks it at the end, and I loved it. I like the first Omen. I love the actress, how she portrayed it. People, the side cast, um, you know, supporting cast. All they let the movie work on its own. It almost feels like Margaret is directing the movie, even when the camera's not on her. I think it's a real smart way. This gives me hope that if there is a new, it's not going to be a, I'm going to fucking rape the original Omen series and just make it fucking some horror fest, uh, you know, exploitative thing. I don't, I didn't care. And I, again, halfway through the movie, a little bit towards the end, I couldn't believe how much I loved this movie. That I'm fucking watching an Omen prequel. And I almost skipped this movie in the batch of movies that I was going to watch. I, you know, I don't look, maybe it's a detriment, obviously, that I don't look to wow my YouTube audience and get um, likes and, you know, comments, although that'd be nice, but this was always set out for me to be a therapy thing, a way to commit to something, and I... You know, let a bit of my passion for the things I love come out where, you know, real life seems to squash everything. You know, it is in this day and age, fast lane, you know, I'm living in Brooklyn, New York. You know, you got to pay rent. You gotta, so, you know, although I, in my heart I'm a writer, a script writer, I want to make movies or whatever, you know, I got to pay the bills and I got to get up and do my fucking work. And there's a balance, good or bad, between me saying I'm not doing that shit no more. And I got to get this creative outlet, you know, I decided when I wrote my first book, and I, I find myself surprised sometimes, coming to a movie that I don't think I'm going to get views for, none of them do, because I don't, I've been doing this for four years, I got maybe six, uh, 60 subs, but I am surprised. A movie directed by Akasha Stevenson, who I've never heard of, who I never watched her shit. Starring people that I don't fucking really know, for, except for Bill Nighy. And, you know, I, I noticed Charles Dance in the beginning. And his voice is unique enough that you kind of understand it's him, even if they're in the professional, but you see him. As the priest runs out to, him, to get him and talk to him, uh, Brennan. This movie's not overly complicated, but it's surreal enough and plays it up with enough of the tropes and does it right where I am immersed in a fucking horror movie. I'm invested in the characters, the good ones, the bad ones. And again, nothing is really pounded over your head and beaten into you where you, I don't know, it feels like 
movies are made for dumb people or just the you know the common things and let's work off it and let's pop off other people's creativity and it maybe is a mindset that I have developed in my later years but I watch these things I invest my time in them I want to be carried away into a different world I want to know that uh, you know the time invested was worth it and I try to give things the benefit of the doubt I love shitty movies there are shitty movies that I tout on here I'll say it again I watch Green Lantern movie way too many times it's not a good movie but I am filled with joy when I watch it I want to see Green Lantern on the screen I'm a sucker whatever I'm set up to watch a horror movie the first omen wasn't sure I skipped it on my first round I wasn't sure I was gonna do it and as soon as the credits ended I knew I wanted to do a podcast on it I I would recommend this movie to almost anybody it has its own prequel origin that works well that you don't have to know the other movies you don't have to be invested in have a childlike, you know, fascination with this. You know, this, the Amityville, Exorcist. I was a horror fan at a young age. The first movie, the only came out in 1976. I'm five years old, and I already knew when I started getting that awareness as a kid, you know, Rosemary's Baby. You know how many times I've ro- watched Rosemary's Baby? And it's not the type of movie you're thinking a kid's going to watch. Even talking about the premise of that movie this blends enough of what you remember what's going to happen because you know the story of damien right is antichrist you know put into a family of influence a diplomat and his rise to you know becoming a president and taking over the world i guess technically and i guess that's the whole themes but this felt very well made it had again this blend of being a little bit surreal with the music and it being in rome feeling like a 70s horror movie that kind of grabs me again i don't think this will be for everybody i don't think anybody's going to want to see claws coming out of hoo-hoos and you know don't want to see vagina whatever the fuck they're doing however they hide it it's gross enough scary enough um you know what the fuck these priests you know controlling women's bodies it's a fucking exclamation point maybe that's the theme of most of these movies uh, in that way that you know the church is so fucking set on controlling a woman's vagina but they don't go around giving out uh you know vasectomies for men right the easiest option right is to stop having unwanted pregnancies Oh, well, what the fuck do they do with them? That's another thing. I'll get in a fucking rant. Well, this thing will be five hours long. But church, no religion gives a fuck about the children after they're born. It's a fucking reality. It's all a fucking bullshit, scam, nonsense. Fuck religion, the major institutions. Not the belief in a God. It doesn't bother me. But this fucking scam shit. And I love that the fucking only said, you know what? No. The church is so fucking desperate. They are so fucking depraved and fucking evil that it's the church that fucking devises a way to bring Satan, uh, the Antichrist, into the world so people will need the church. Fucking genius. The way it was implemented in this movie, it's set out in the beginning. You think it can't work. And maybe it doesn't work for a lot of people. I don't know. I usually don't go and start to dip my toe into the what was the response to this movie until after i'm done so this is more my take you know so then after this and once i post it you know over the next day or two i like to go and see the people i agree with and don't agree with the people i like and don't like the reviewers and how they're going to talk about the movie and kind of see where i land because sometimes my views change on that and i don't want that to change to happen before i do my own review so the first omen, I recommend it to everybody. If you love horror, be careful with a little bit of grossness and whatever. But I think it works well. It's a prequel to me of 
almost epic proportions in the in the way it really hit me at the end. I couldn't tell you how happy I was with him in the car and they're talking about the diplomat and they show Gregory Peck's fucking face. Holy shit, he's like a little picture and you know right away this is going to be uh, a classic for me. This will be this I'll kick the Omen series off now with this with joy. Knowing I got a great prequel and then I'm gonna watch what happens. And we've got this side thing with the Margaret's still alive, the daughter. You can make the daughter the Christ. You can make her have like equal power. You can do a lot of stuff. Going from the Damien Omen movies with what's going on parallel. So we know what happened in the Omen movies, good or bad. You can do what Margaret's whole, you know, um, or you could do the whole story but run parallel and even catch up to what they did in the future with, you know, Damien being older and weaving his way through politics and becoming powerful in a, in a you know, and even the Omen 2, I remember well, it's the other two that, you know, where Damien's getting older. But I watched them, and I haven't watched them in a while, and I'm going to. Even Rosemary's Baby, I watched that less than a year ago. I really enjoyed the fucking movie, The First Omen. Thumbs up. Kudos to the director, you know, the sound people, the casting. It, it works on almost every level. There's a couple of nitpicks here that I don't even want to bother. It just doesn't make sense to me. Are you, I, here's a good movie. When you forget the things that kind of bothered you, because even bringing them up now, yeah, you might get a, things that like almost don't make sense. But it's a fucking horror movie, and the priest in the beginning who gives away the, the goat right away, and then Brennan comes back. You think this movie would just fucking be a disaster? Like, but it's never too much. It's never hitting you over the head. It's never too gross. It's never too surreal. It's never too much jump scares. It's just well done. The First Omen by Akasha Stevenson. I recommend this movie. From the little subtleties to, yeah, nitpick here and there. What did the fucking guy say that she danced with? What, what the fuck was he trying to say? Stay away from me. I didn't know follow me gets killed by a car is all this part of satan is damien did you did, did was the reveal that she was impregnated because that was part of the thing how could this have happened how could it have happened right when you're watching this movie well how could she have gotten impregnated it's not like they do spells and is a voodoo doll or whatever no she had to have been Okay, she went out with this girl who set her up. Okay, I get it. Uh, she blacks out. They part of the whole cult thing. Uh, they bring her to the fucking priest, and this jackal devil thing fucks, fucks her, gets her pregnant. But she doesn't have a belly or anything until the end of the movie where she's doing this awesome, fucking creepy, possessed, jerky, writhing moment that will forever be etched in my mind. This is a moment that I'm going to, it's going to be one of the great moments in the Damien franchise for me, but in horror in general. Fucking no Tiger Free, good for her, where she's an almost annoyingly fucking American in Rome. <laughs> it's kind of funny. To uh, befriending a fucking strange girl who is being kept away from people. To the plot telling you in the beginning, to the reveal, to the twist of the twist. I loved it all, I enjoyed it, and I recommend The First Omen. I could talk about this movie for long, but I've been making these things way too long. And this just needs to be shorter, in my opinion. It needs to say, right off the bat, 40 minutes or so, I love The First Omen. This is something that'll go in my repertoire. If you love The Omen or you like horror, I think you're going to enjoy this. Watch it. And that's like the best recommendation I can give. This is a, in my opinion, a superb horror movie 
and a prequel that fits right the mood the, everything the lighting the casting nothing is too overboard in my opinion it just blends well watch the first omen and i guess that'll be it for this i want everybody to have a wonderful summer my love to all of you till next time